Hi there. I have a new sticker that was sent to me for my virtual wall by Louis Bandera. Now I'm going to put a link below the video in the description box so you can click on it and check out his YouTube channel. I hope you'll take a look and show him a little support. Thank you for sending it to me, Louis. And if anybody else wants to send me a sticker, I'd be happy to get it and display it every time I put up a video or every time I feel ambitious enough to put the virtual wall up. And if you want one of mine, I'd be happy to send one to you. So just put a comment and I'll send one to you. Now, this week I have a little bit of an apology. My camera wasn't working quite right and I didn't know that until I started doing the video editing. Now, as usual, I try to show two different perspectives. The one on the left side of the screen is occasionally going to be blurry and go in and out of focus. I didn't know that was happening, so I'm sorry. On the right, I use my cell phone, and of course, it works better than the camera. Now, you might be wondering, what is this I've got here? Well, this is today's project, and I hope you'll stick around and find out what it is and how I got it looking like this. So, without further ado, Let's go do some work, get to the lathe. Today's project is going to be from a piece of wood given to me again by my friend Dick. The last one he gave me that I used was what my wife decided was a, a potato. <laughs> People have said I should call it a mashed potato ball or someone even said I should put mashed potatoes in it. I'm not gonna do that. And the consensus seems to be that it's hard rock maple. Uh, someone said that it could be a half of a macadamia nut. Well, that would be one heck of a big macadamia nut. Anyway, I'm going to accept it as hard rock maple. I still like it as a beautiful little bowl. Certainly different. Now today, I have what Dick told me is a spruce burl. And I love it. I think it's just gorgeous, just as it is. I really don't want to do anything to change this at all. But of course, to put it on the lathe, I need to do something. Now, first of all, it's a little too long if I go to the center of the burl to attach it to the lathe. So I'm going to take it to the bandsaw and trim this off a little bit. And then on the inside, if this will show up, you can see that on this side, it's much higher, closer to the ruler than down here. So I'm going to take a chisel, oh my God, a hand tool, Try to clean this up until it gets to the point where it's fairly level in there. I'm going to put it on a face plate. And then on this side, I want to turn a flat spot so it has a place to sit. And also put a recess in there, a mortise, for my chuck in expansion mode. So I'll get this all ready and I hope you'll come and meet me over at the lathe. As you can see, this is wildly off balance. And it's not a matter of being able to move it down along the grain, which would be great, but the off balance is actually across the grain. There's much more mass on this side than on this side. So I'm going to move my faceplate over an inch and see what kind of difference that makes. I may need to move it more, I may need to move it less. And I'll move it until I get it so it's balanced, and I'll put it back on the lathe and start some turning. Well, I managed to get it so I can turn it at a thousand RPM, and there's barely any vibration in the lathe. Now to do that, I had to move the face plate over in this direction, about three eighths of an inch, and then down along the grain a quarter of an inch. I was surprised how little I had to move it, but it's turning beautifully now, spinning without a lot of vibration. Now, one problem I have is that if I want to turn this rough part away, I have to bring my gouge in far enough that I'm going to be totally destroying this part of the burl. I don't want to do that. I want to leave this burl as well as I can. So I'm going to use my random orbit sander on here, trying not to get anywhere near any of the burl. Also on the other end to clean it up. Again, trying not to hit this burl. Now I'm going to fill these 
very prominent cracks with CA glue and sawdust. Try to clean, clamp them up a little bit, clean them up, and then I'll be back to do the turning for a flat spot here and a recess for my chuck in expansion mode. So I'll take care of this, I'll be right back. I have these ends sanded to 320 grit now. This was really beautiful, it's got some red in there. I'm hoping the oil will make that pop. This side still looks a little cracked and crazed, but there's enough sawdust and glue in there to hold this together. So it's much improved over what it was. Now it's time to start turning a flat area for this to sit on and the recess for my chuck. I'm going to be turning it with a 3 8 inch bowl gouge. I'll be turning it at 1000 RPM. I'm not sure that I've ever turned spruce before, but I'm amazed by the aroma. It really is like walking through a forest. Lovely smell. Well, I think this flat area will be enough for this bowl, or whatever it's going to be, to sit on. I've marked the center. I've got my compass set to one and one eighth of an inch, actually just under that. And I'm going to put the recess for the jaws of the chuck right there. It's going to work just great. Now I'm just going to sand all of this and I'll be right back. Now I've got it signed, dated, and the species identified with my pyrography pen and my logo coin glued in. So now I'm ready to reverse this into the jaws of my chuck and start turning the other side. I have it reversed now. I've got the tail stock with the live center brought up for some support, but you might be able to tell it's not even touching. Just in case this actually comes loose on the chuck, I'm hoping it will prevent it from flying off of there. Now, I'm going to be turning at 1000 RPM, and I'm going to be using my usual 3 8 inch bowl gouge. It's my favorite gouge. And this gouge has a 50 degree grind on it. As you can see, there's a whole lot closer to this side than over here, so it's going to be very off center. Now, one of the problems I could have is when I get deep enough that I want to come across the bottom of the bowl, this could end up hitting right there. If that should happen, I have another bowl gouge. This one's a half inch gouge 
with a 70 degree grind. So I should be able to get right into the bottom of the bowl with that, with no problem, if I need to use it. Now my, one of my questions is, when I'm taking this off here, some of these screw holes may not be removed properly. So I may have to do something about that, fill them or just come out further. I'll have to judge that as I go along. Alright, I'm going to try pulling this tail stock right out of there now. I'll retighten the chuck just a little bit and then I'll be able to swing the handle of my gouge around a little further. check that that chuck is tight enough one more time. This is a soft wood, so I don't trust it to not compress and come off of there. All right, that should hold it. There are a couple of screw holes, these two in particular that are very close to the edge. To get rid of those without coming out further, I would have to go straight down quite a bit. So I am going to come over just a little bit more. I just have to remember not to bring my gouge around this way. It could be rather catastrophic for this piece. I have my tool rest quite far out so I don't hit this. Try bringing this in at an angle because I'm a little too far out with the gouge. It wants to vibrate quite a bit. I think that should do it. Make sure this is tight. Try a little bit more. Alright, I think I've got rid of these screw holes that were on the side here. Now I just need to go deep enough 
get rid of the ones in the center. The inside screws I used two inches long and the outside were inch and a half so I need to go a little deeper on the inside anyway. This pull cut is working very well here but I'm going to try this 70 degree grind just to see how it feels. Well, it's not too bad on the bottom at all, but as you can see, it's very grabby in the corner. So I can say I've tried it, and I'll go back to my 3 8 That's not looking too bad. In fact, I think I will leave it like that. Just sand this now. And I'm going to take my random orbit sander, try to flatten this all out. After I sand this, I'll come back and just give you a short look at what I'm doing with the random orbit sander. Well, I have finished this project now, except of course for the finish. Benny was asking me how long I leave my pieces immersed in mineral oil, because I always say I'm giving them a bath. Well, I don't actually give them a bath insofar as sticking them in a bowl and submerging them in oil. I don't have a vessel or container big enough to do that, and even if I did, I don't have the money to buy the mineral oil it would probably take to fill that thing. What I usually do is stick it into this container and then just pour some oil in and spread it around. On the outside, of course, I can't spread it very evenly, but I'll do the best I can and just make sure that it's all covered just by pouring it over it. So after this is penetrated and I'm not getting any more soaking in, I will take some shots of it, video or photos to show at the end and you can see what this looks like. Maybe you can tell right now it is really making that red streak pop and the grain look great. So I'm happy with this and I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, click the like button. Once again, let me know I'm doing something right. Don't forget to subscribe and click that share button. Share it with your friends if you think they might enjoy this. Thank you for coming around today. I hope you'll come back next time. In the meantime, have a good day in your shop and be safe. Take care now. Oh yeah, this is going to look good out here too.